all right everyone so in today's video we're going to be starting something i've called the a to z of dbt where we're going to talk about a concept i'm um, using the alphabetical order a concept in dbt using the alphabetical order from a to z say for example we're going to have um let's say for a something called artifacts for b we talk about dbt build for c we talk about dbt config and stuff like that yeah so i got this inspiration from bruno de lima Bruno is um, one of the DBT meetups organizer in Brazil and then we both got the DBT community spotlight, the first DBT community spotlight and also he was um, also awarded alongside of Pemi Fabi in the just concluded Coalesce conference, right? So um, Bruno is a great guy, I just saw his post on LinkedIn and I was like, yeah, we could have a video on this and so that's how we have the A to Z of DBT, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be starting with A which is um, DBT artifact. So Let's jump onto my screen right now. I'll try to understand what DBT artifacts are all about and how you can make the most of them in your DBT project. All right, so what are DBT artifacts? DBT artifacts are simply metadata from your DBT jobs. With every DBT invocation, meaning every, every DBT command you run, metadata is produced out of that invocation. And these are stored in JSON files. The predominant um, artifacts are semantic underscore semantic manifest.json, manifest.json, catalog.json, run result.json, sources.json. And these artifacts, for example, are used to empower your documentation. So when you see your DBT docs, um, the, those information are coming in from the artifacts that have been passed into these JSON files. Um, your state modification, you use, let's say you use the state modified in your DBT command right so how is dbt able to tell the current state from the previous state is able to get that information from the artifacts produced from the dbt jobs and um, also on source freshness right um artifacts could be used for several reasons on the docs here it says for example to gain insights into your semantic layer calculate project level test coverage and perform analysis on run timing say for example you want to um compare every of your model runs you want to compare the timings you can actually get those run timings the timings of those runs from your artifacts. Um, something we used in my former place of work with artifacts was that after our DBT testing, we had to we used artifacts to create a dashboard to power a dashboard that told that, that told us um how our tests were doing, like the number of um tests that were correct and the ones that failed, the ones with error or warnings and stuff like that. All this information we picked it out of our DBT artifacts, right? And these artifacts are manifest, catalog, run results, JSON. And then, so when are these catalogs produced? Most DBT commands uh, produce artifacts, right? Most DBT commands release metadata artifacts as it's well. And then for semantic manifest is produced whenever a DBT project is passed. Your manifest artifact is produced by commands that read and understand your DBT project. Um, your run result is produced by commands that run, compile, or catalog nodes, nodes in your DAG. And your catalog are produced by dog generate your sources are produced by your source freshness um, command in your dbt project and um so where are these artifacts produced say for example if you're using um dbt dbt core you will find your artifacts in your target folder so these are catalog.json um manifest.json run result.json semantic underscore manifest json so if you go to our dbt cloud for example and um you let's say you've, you've done your dbt you've, you've run your dbt jobs um you have your source freshness your build your doc generate on that you find a tab called artifacts beside your run summary and if you click on these artifacts you'll find artifacts from your runs like manifest or json are saved here so we have catalog.json you have all your x all your sql files that were compiled your compiled sql files you have your manifest.json, you have your run result.json, you have your semantic manifest.json, and you have your sources.json. So I've downloaded all these files. If you click on them, you're going to download them. I've downloaded all these files and I've opened them here in my VS Code. So you can just take a look at what these um, stuff look like. So let's start with semantic manifest. So let's start with semantic manifest. It says semantic manifest is produced whenever your DBT project is passed. So what do we have in our semantic manifest? You have your semantic models, empty list, metrics, empty list, project configuration, um, time spine, table configuration, empty list, metadata, no. It says whenever your model is run, your semantic manifest is created. And then we have manifest produced 
by commands that read and understand your project and run results by commands that run and compile or catalog your project. If you check the manifest.json, you would find um, stuff like um, dbt schema version, the dbt version, when <clears throat> this um, manifest was generated, the invocation ID for this manifest, the environment it was run, the dbt cloud job ID, the dbt cloud run ID, you'll find the project name, the project ID, um, if you send an anonymous stats, usage stats, basically you also find the materializations, if you have tags, you'll find the configuration as well. You'll find your configuration, your materialization, your test as well, incremental strategy, every information really about all your DBT models. You would find them in your manifest.json. This is one, one of the models. Stage yes, election candidates. You find the aliases, you find databases. If there's a pre hook, a post hook, everything you just try to find everything in this manifest or JSON. On the run results is created by commands that run, compile, or catalog your node. So if we check this, you would find the invocation ID of the run, the environment ID, um, run reason, run, run reason category. You'll find the results of the run, status, success, the timing of the run, when it was compiled, when it was completed, um, execution time, the thread ID, adapter response, the relation name, where it was built. So really, you find all this information in your run result. In your sources, you find your sources, information you find in your sources are, are, are information that pertains to your source freshness test. That's information you find in your sources.json file. And then for the catalog, catalog is produced by doc generate. So every time you do your docs, your dbt doc generates, um, this catalog.json file is generated, right? And you can you have the metadata for your dbt docs generate. So basically, these artifacts are metadata that are produced under the hood from your dbt runs or projects. So whatever you're running doing on dbt, you can still get the raw artifacts, the things that are produced under the hood for your own further analysis or as whatever the case may be for you. Like I've said, there are several use cases for artifacts. For me, uh, one of our last use cases was to create a custom dashboard. Uh, you also check, um, there is this um, package called Elementary, on um, DBT, DBT Elementary package, Not it's, it's a third party, not owned by DBT. Um, they also use artifacts to create something like a dashboard for your chest, for your testing, um, in terms of data quality and stuff like that. So all those things are powered by your DBT artifacts, right? So yeah. Um, have you tried to use artifacts for your own use case? You can explore them and see how you could use artifacts within your DBT project. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a thing or two out of this video. Have you been using artifacts? Let us know in the comment section. Happy to hear your thoughts and your questions. See you meet again in the next video. Bye for now.